So, um, so, all right, let's go and begin. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for giving us this time, and I am just so thrilled that there's even people coming out, braving this, this weather, and so I just pray that you just continue to make your word profitable. Soften our hearts, Lord. Soften our hearts, because the hard heart is never going to hear. And so I just pray for you to just continue to minister to us your grace. I pray for you to just speak to those who have ears to hear. And so thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. So turn the Bibles to the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2. As you know, uh, three, four weeks ago, we started the book of Habakkuk. And two weeks ago, we took a break because Daniel came and gave the word, and it was a, a powerful word. And of course, uh, last week we had that snow cancellation. And so today, uh, and, and actually, I put a, a video on Facebook and YouTube, and it was kind of like a, a deep, heavy study. And so today, what I want to do is give a little. Uh, a little small talk, a little easy small talk, a little devotional talk. Um, one of the things that I was really impressed about uh, this this individual, it's going to be. No, somebody just said it's not. Okay, one of the one of the things that um, actually uh, actually Daniel, would you look at it? Would you look at Facebook? Somebody said it's not going. So, um, so mm, I don't want to give that now. So that's. Anyway, so we're going to give a small talk, okay? So Daniel, not Daniel, sorry, Habakkuk chapter 2. So small talk, by the way. So it's not going to be very long. The whole point is the fact that this, this amazing, amazing pastor last century, he's already gone on with the Lord, but he said in order to put together a, a powerful, powerful sermon, two things has to happen. Two things, right? You've got to start the sermon with a bang. You gotta end it with a bang. And then keep the two as close together as possible. <laughs> and so, of course, I'm gonna keep this a little short. So, you guys know I used to do about 35, 45 minutes, but today it's a little bit little shorter. So, um, so, you guys know the context of the book of Habakkuk. Habakkuk is an Old Testament, pro uh, Old Testament prophet. He was prophesying in the days right before the siege of Jerusalem, the first siege, which was about 605 BC. Of course, those days, uh, the king was Zedekiah. Another prophet that was prophesying was uh, Jeremiah. Um, Habakkuk was uh, a resident of Jerusalem. And of course, he was actually walking around the street and he notices that there's so much lawlessness and, and violence and, and, and strife and contentions. And so this book is at, uh, unlike any other because it's a dialogue between Habakkuk and God. And so I love this book because we'll talk today about devotional life, okay? And how devotional life as Christians should be a dialogue between us and God. So Habakkuk begins this dialogue with God. He says, look, why are you showing me all this lawlessness, all this hatred, all this violence and plundering, and, and you're not going to do anything about it? Because, of course, he's standing nine years away from what God's about to do. He can't see nine years ahead of him. So God says, look, among the nations, and watch and be utterly astounded. For I will work and work in your days which you will not believe. No one were told you. And, of course, we know that's True, because, like he said, I'm using, or going to use, the Chaldeans, which is, of course, another name for the Babylonians. I brought this up three weeks ago. David is English, right? You're English, right? But he also, what? Well, really? You're Welsh? <laughs> well, pardon me. Well, that kind of... Anyways, uh, those that are English could go by British, too. Does Welsh have a, a different name? <laughs> All right, so, uh, so that, that you should have told me three weeks ago I called you British and English. So anyway, so so it's the same Chaldeans, Babylonians, same thing. So not that I would say Welsh, British, English, the same things. I would never say that. So Scottish, they're all on the same island. So anyway, so so here's the thing. He's going around. God tells him what he's about to do, raising up the, the, the Chaldeans. And, and of course, like, I don't know, but Habakkuk is like, that's a, a really 
perverted, wicked people. You can't use them to judge them. I get it, the word, we're bad and we straight from you, and but you can't use a people like that, worse than us. So of course, the rest of chapter one, he basically is complaining to God. And we talked about the fact that devotions in our prayer to God can be a complaint, right? Because it's the relationship we have. It's, it's talking to God. And if you don't agree with God, it's okay. But it's just kind of yielding to him at some point. So he gives his complaint. Then chapter 2, verse 1, he says this. And I would stand my watch and set myself on a rampart and watch to see what he will say to me and what he will answer or what I will answer when I am corrected. Wow. I love this because what does he say here? He says, okay, I voice my complaint. So what I'm going to do now is go to my rampart, which of course the word rampart is a tower, if you will, like a tower that is built into a castle. And so it's like a fortified place. And of course, the definition could also mean an enclosed place. And so he says, I'm going to go somewhere, my tower, and of course, I'm going to throw this out to you guys, but this tower that he's going to, this rampart that he's going to, is somewhere that he goes to all the time. This is part of his routine when he talks to God. He goes to this rampart, this, this room, okay? He goes there. He says, I'm going to go there. I'm going to figure some things out. I'm going to wait to hear from you. And of course, if you rebuke me, I'll see what I have. I'll say when you do that, okay? So I love this. I love this about Habakkuk. Because he says, I'm going to go where I always go to hear from you. Obviously, most of you guys know that I started a, a personal training business. And it's been awesome. I mean, my business is that's, that's just booming. And, but I do follow a couple of um, health and fitness experts online and on YouTube. And one of the guys... He's amazing, right? He's, um, he, he's, his business is booming and his startup, if you will, his recognition is skyrocketing. I was listening to one of the, uh, the Q&A sessions that he was having and it was on YouTube and somebody asked him, like, I mean, look at your schedule and you're uh, away from your house 200 days out of the year and what is it that you do, a routine, whatever that keeps your schedule you know, spiritually and, and, and mentally and emotionally, like sound and all that. And so he says, well, there's a couple of things I do, a couple, but the main one that I attribute, uh, the fact that uh, my spiritual, uh, emotional state continues to stay level and grounded, he says, is, you know, I, I live in an apartment building, very posh, by the way, so he brought things like that, but very posh apartment building. Down the road is a Starbucks. He says, every single morning, I wake up early, take my dog for a walk, we go to the Starbucks, and there, get my, uh, you know, frappe or whatever, or uh, cappuccino, whatever he gets. He says, I sit down. That's my routine. I have earphones on, and I listen to some music, and clear my mind, and when I get to the Starbucks, I, you know, his habit is to think about two, three things that he could be grateful for, because everything's going well for him, right? And so he says, I set my mind to, to determine, to think about two, three things that I could be grateful for in my life. And every day he does this. And as I'm listening to this, I'm like, oh my goodness. Like, that's a page out of the Christian playbook, right? Of doing devotions. And of course, this guy's not a Christian. This guy is a very secular person. In fact, when he talks, he, he drops the F bomb a lot. And so, like, he, he's not a Christian. Yeah, he's taking a page out of the Christian playbook of setting yourself apart and going somewhere to do, if you will, to kind of clear his mind and hear. See, here's the thing. A lot of Christians don't do this. A lot of Christians don't set themselves apart in the morning. Here's the thing. Uh, two things I want to bring out real quick and then third later. As we read, as Habakkuk, after conversing with God, he goes to that place, that tower, that rampart, which I suggest it's somewhere he goes all the time to talk to God. It's not just a random, oh, there's a tower, I'm going to go there. No, it's, he knows exactly where he's going. It's somewhere he always goes. Where is your rampart? 
where's a place that you know in the morning, and I'm going to talk about why in the morning in a bit, but where is that place you could call your grandpa an enclosed place, a place where you could go and escape? We all have to have We're creatures of habit. We are, right? And so think about it, determine in your mind, maybe it's a basement that you could kind of get away from the kids. Maybe in the morning you take the coffee out to the front porch and watch the sunrise. I don't know. See, but Jody and I, you know, we moved into this amazing new house and we got this, we call this our little building room, right? Well, guess what? Every morning, every morning about 6 o'clock she wakes up. I wake up about 6.30. We see each other there. We, you know, we, we got our coffees and we sit there. That has turned into our grandpa where we meet up with God. It's every morning. It's our devotional room. And we're thinking about getting a plaque or something that says grandpa something like that. Because what? Because that has turned into that. That has turned into our tower. In fact, the Bible says that the Lord is a strong tower, the righteous one to it in our safe. That strong tower, that rampart, the Lord is that. You've got to go there because it says the righteous one to it in our safe. You feel safe because back with him, he complained to God, he disagreed with God, but was he worried? No, because the Lord is our strong time, the righteous run to within our sin. So express yourself, talk to God. At the same time, let's say this. When do you do your devotions? Or if you do your devotions? Because we're talking about things that a lot of Christians, when they uh, have been Christians for five, 10 years, they know about, but there's Christians here that are young Christians that may not know the importance about devotional life. When do you do your devotions? People will say, well, you do it in the morning, right? And I agree with that. And I'll give you why. Right? Because um, there's people that say, well, I can't wake up early. Or I wake up at 5.30. Or I wake up at 4.30. And I got to be out of the house at 5 or 6 or whatever. So I, I can't do it any earlier. <sighs> Two things. See... If you're someone that you have to go to work at 4.30 or 5.30 or 6.30 and you, you just can't fathom, like, I, I only wake up early enough to get ready. I can't spare another 30 minutes of my sleep. Let me throw out two things. Um, in March, we tend to adjust at daylight savings, right? We do it, right? When we lose an hour, we adjust and we give up that hour. It's not like it's an hour. We give up that hour. We wake up an hour earlier and, and then we adjust. And yeah, we do this. Yeah, we said we can't do that for God. We, no, I, I wake up early enough. Don't take away 30 more minutes of my sleep. You do it in March. Why can't you do it for God? Right? Something else is um, the Bible says that God's mercies are new every single morning. I believe it's not a mistake when he says his mercies are new every single morning. Right? It's not some theological term, yes, woo woo, his mercies are new every single morning. No. Yes, it's kind of true, but it's existential. It, 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 it's there for a reason. It's for us to wake up and seek him, experience him, encounter him every single morning. His mercies. Brand new, brand new slate every single morning. He doesn't say, my mercies are, are new. Every single day around the afternoon, nighttime, when you know you have a bad day at work, you come home grumpy and you throw your stuff down, you get grumpier because the food your, your wife cooked wasn't really that good. And so you get grumpier and you just want to turn on some sports or whatever, but there's not a team you want to watch and then there's no show on Netflix and so, fine, I'll go to God. His mercies will be new for me this, this night. If I have the time. See, that, that's not what the Bible says. Yes, theologically, yes, the position is that His mercies are new every single morning. But practically speaking, it exists that mercy exists because what? Every single morning, we wake up morning by morning, experience his mercies, 
Seek him. He says, seek me and you will, and I will be found. You will be searched for me with all your heart. Wake up. And it's not just, I'm here. Experience his mercies, right? It's for us to, to encounter. And so those two things, I believe strongly now that you do it in the morning. Take time out. An extra 30 minutes, you lose that sleep. Yeah, but what you gain on the other side is so much greater. So, again, find that rampart in your house. Maybe it's a porch. Maybe it's the, you know, I said the Bible says it's better to go on the rooftop right? than with a contentious woman, right? And so maybe you got to go on the rooftop. I don't know. But where? Go somewhere that is uh, a place you could call that place rampart. Maybe it's Starbucks. I don't know. Do it in the morning. And then some people say, well, I tend to do it and, you know, but like, I read a couple of chapters, but I just have a hard time praying. I, I really do. Like, because, man, if your life is falling apart, you, you find that your prayer life is really good, right? Maybe it's a relative that's dying of cancer, maybe you got a sickness, or maybe somebody's going through bankruptcy, and, and your prayer life becomes really good. But then you find yourself right now, maybe your life is great. And, you know, you really don't know, like, you know, well, I don't know what to pray. Everything's great. Well, going back to this health and fitness guy. His life is great. His business is on millions. And, and his, his stardom is through the roof. He, he's recognizable. He says, I take time to give thanks and to think of two things or three things that I can be grateful for. And this is a secular individual that we can learn from. Be thankful. Be grateful. In fact, that's biblical because the Bible, Paul says, to the Thessalonian church. All things, above all else, above all else, give thanks. So again, I look out there, I don't know if anybody is dying of cancer or anything like that, or is going through bankruptcy, but if everything's hunky-dory and everything's good, guess what? When you're done reading your Bible, two, three chapters, whatever you want to do, when you're at your rampart, your place that you know you go to every single day, in the early mornings, before you begin your day, you're thinking that, okay, what do I pray? God has done so much for us, right? In fact, he says in James, every good and every perfect gift comes from him. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. I guarantee you, this will bless your prayer life. By the way, don't be like those that, uh, you know, people often say, uh, I thank you in advance, right? Like, I hate that. Like, they say, by the way, if you're going to do anything, uh, I thank you in advance. No, thank me afterwards when I do. You understand what I'm saying? Nobody likes to be thanked in advance for something they haven't done, that they haven't really shown to do, all these things, right? And then you do it. Somebody just walks around unthankful because supposedly they threw out a blanket. I thank everybody in advance. Well, heck. I just mowed the lawn for you. I just drove out to, to Shenandoah for you. I just, whatever, I just did this. And, and no thanks at all, because somehow, at the beginning of the week, you thank everybody in the bank. That's not how God works either. He doesn't say, well, I did all this for you, but it's okay, he thanked me in the bank. January 1st. God, thank you so much for a brand new year, and happy to conquer 2021, and thank you in the bank for everything you're gonna do for me. And then this whole year, he's blessing and he's turning things around. He, you know, and you, you don't give him thanks. So again, don't be like those that says, I thank you in advance. When something happens, thank you. When something happens, when I do it for you, thank me. When you do it for me, you expect me to thank you. How much? I, I guarantee you, this is always the way it works. You expect something from me, but you never return it. When it's a thank you, whether it's a reply text, whether it's a reply email, on the spot within two minutes, whether it's anything, you guys expect that from me. But you don't, there's no reciprocation. 
I guarantee you. That's, you know, and so, again, don't be like that. So, wrap it up. That devotional time, wake up in the morning, spend it with God at the place that you're going to go to every single morning. That spot that is called yours. Do it, thank them, thank them, and do it regularly, daily. Right? People say, well, I'll do my devotions and I'll do it like twice a month or, you know, once every two weeks, which is the same thing, by the way. So, uh, no. You guys know I started a personal training business and we have a gym there on the other side, but uh, I have this client that I started up with this actually yesterday, their first session. She and her husband, they signed up, they basically said, we're gonna just try this out. We're gonna go ahead and do it once a week on Saturdays. And I'm thinking, okay, I'm gonna introduce myself and see what they're at and all these things. But seriously, I'll tell you, I told Jody when I came home yesterday, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not sticking with them after two weeks, three weeks. Because there's no progress that's gonna be made once a week. There's no progress. No pro and my name is on it. I don't want them somehow six weeks or six months from now be talking to people. Oh, yeah, I have a personal. Oh, yeah, I'm a personal trainer, you know? And they look sloppy. I've been working with Steve Wayne for six months. Well, I don't want my name attached to that, right? And so, again, I'm going to talk to them in two weeks or three weeks. I talk to you when I do that, so, and you're here. But, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not okay with that. You either commit to two, three, four sessions a week, or we sever our relationship. <laughs> That's the thing. Because you want to get stronger, bigger, healthier. Those weights in the gym at the church, by the way, um, it's got to be pushed. It's got to be lifted. It's got to be, you know, regular, daily. If you want to get stronger, you want to get bigger, swole, right? That's my term, swole. But if you want that, it's got to be daily. Same with devotional, right? Same with our emotional, spiritual state. You think, well, I read the Bible two weeks ago. I read the Bible a month ago. Why well, come to church every two weeks? Or Seriously, it's a daily, daily partaking because if you don't do it daily, you're going to suffer. You are. You are going to suffer. The term a week without God makes you weak. Right? Just telling you. Prioritize. Prioritize. Get that, identify that rampart in your house that you go to. Wake up an extra 30 minutes or 15 minutes. I'll give you 15. God is so good. He'll give you 10. It's like Abraham. You, know, you guys are like Abraham, you know, negotiating with God, you know. Well, God, I want to do it, you know, but what if I do it for 20 minutes instead of 30 minutes like, like, like Steve is, you know, suggesting. Okay, okay, God says, okay, I'll take 20. Okay, now, don't, don't let me be uh, offensive in your side. What about 10 minutes? You guys are like that. You guys have like Abraham, right? Yeah, you're going to start off 30 minutes. Two weeks later, you're going to be like negotiating with God. How about if we go down to five minutes? Right? Don't do that. Don't negotiate with, with God like that. Determine that this is going to be a place in the morning, that place that you call your grandpa, identify that place, make it your own, get your Bible, put it there, a pen. By the way, when you read the Bible, put a pen next to you because when God speaks, you got to write it down, okay? Expect God to speak to you because if you're reading the Bible without a pen, you're basically saying, God, you're not going to talk to me. Read it with a pen in hand because he's going to speak to you. When he speaks to you, write it down. Amen? And thank him. He wants to be thanked. Don't be like, why cover that? January 1st. No, thank you. Thank you. So, um, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just uh, I thank you for uh, uh, this little talk that we had. And it kind of went a little longer than what I expected, but still small compared to what I usually do. And so, just thank you, Lord. Thank you so much for all you've done all you're about to do, and all you will continue to do in our lives until we are in glory. So thank you.